Hi, I'm Nathan Herrig with Carmel and Goodwill EMS in Carlisle, Pennsylvania, and it's EMS Week. Our agency is lucky to have so many dedicated providers willing to come to the assistance of anyone in our community 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year. During EMS Week, attention from the media, elected officials, and general public finally shifts to what's going on with the emergency medical services. The stories you hear are great. Stories of cardiac arrest saves, innovations, and outstanding community service from providers who dedicate everything they can to their community. The problem is, a lot goes ignored, and once the week is up, very few are focusing on the very real challenges facing EMS in Pennsylvania. So this year, we've put together a short video series highlighting some of these challenges and some of the potential solutions while we have your attention. One of the hottest phrases in the emergency services recently has been recruitment and retention. Heard most often in the conversation about volunteer firefighters and fire departments, this topic deals with how we get people in the emergency services and how we keep those with training in the field. Government officials propose tax credits. Fire departments might alter training requirements or schedules to make it work for someone who carries a full-time job. Businesses might even offer perks to volunteers to try to incentivize them to join up. Unfortunately, whenever EMS gets lumped into this conversation, everyone views us as an all-volunteer service, and that can have some potentially disastrous consequences, which we'll discuss later on. Before we get too deep into all that, first, know that EMS in Pennsylvania can come in a wide variety of flavors. Some agencies, like Cumberland Goodwill, are private, non-profit services. Others might be part of a fire department. Others might be part of a hospital. Some might be for-profit services, and even others might be municipal services. While there are a few great all-volunteer emergency medical services left in Pennsylvania, most of us have had to transition to paid staff just to keep up with the sheer volume of emergencies, regulatory or administrative work, or even just to keep up with the knowledge and practices and techniques that are out there to help us save more lives. True salary data is really hard to come by, but a recent South Central PA survey showed that the average starting salary for an emergency medical technician can be anywhere from minimum wage to around an average of $15 an hour. Now, paramedics with their higher certification level can tend to expect about $15 to $25 to start on average. To put this into perspective, in Carlisle, right now, there are job advertisements for entry-level warehouse positions at $16 an hour. These do not require the extensive training as an emergency medical technician might experience. And to be honest, the wage and benefit outlook for those careers is a lot better than that in the emergency services. Which brings us to our first major problem. There are not enough EMS providers to go around. In reports published by the Pennsylvania Department of Health, data from 2012 showed 50,277 licensed EMS providers for 1,631 agencies. In 2016, both numbers tanked. That left just 40,003 providers in Pennsylvania to handle a population of 12.78 million. 10,274 providers vanished with their certifications either lapsing or they were finally removed from the rolls. Even more troubling, 301 agencies closed, merged, or let their registration lapse in that same period, leaving just 1,330 open throughout the entire Commonwealth. Thankfully, the EMS providers in our state are pretty awesome. They work for multiple agencies, some even volunteering just to keep this EMS system running. We've dealt with an aging population and an opioid epidemic without substantial increases in funding from our governments. Governments tend to focus on getting us naloxone and not on the people who are going to administer it. However, this attitude of having to work at multiple places is taking its toll on our mental and physical health. Providers can get burnt out faster. Some transition to other states leaving Pennsylvania in search of better hours, wages, and even better sign-on bonuses. Some look for the career that allows them to work normal job hours. This leads to a lot of people leaving the emergency medical service fields. To say that agencies like our own should pay EMTs and paramedics better is an understatement. They deserve it. The problem is that EMS agencies in Pennsylvania have been living on a fixed income for a while now. 
Although we'll talk a lot more about our financial difficulties in a later video, we're going to tell you what you need to know right now. First, know that Pennsylvania Medicaid has not increased its reimbursements to ambulance services since 2004. Insurance companies can still not pay EMS directly if they want to. Finally, our budgets tend to be first on the chopping block when it comes to competition with other public safety services. Everyone assumes that because EMS can bill, we have tons of money, which simply is not true. We'll go over this all in depth in another video, but fixing the direct pay loophole, which House Bill 1827 aims to do, and raising PA Medicaid rates for ambulances, like House Bill 699 aims to do, would add over $250,000 just to our agency alone, which we could then pass on to our providers. We could see another $50,000 a year added to that if insurance companies were required to reimburse emergency medical services for situations where they're able to provide care at a patient's home without transporting them to the emergency room. This not only would help emergency medical services, but it would help patients with medical bills and strain on the overall healthcare system. House Bill 1013 has been drafted to do just this. These fixes can help us put more money into the pockets of providers, but it's not going to solve the problem of there being not enough providers to begin with. Pennsylvania law needs to recognize emergency medical service workers regardless of if they're paid or volunteer. Incentives and benefits for volunteer responders should extend to all those in the emergency medical services. Finally, many people who want to become EMTs or paramedics need to pay out of pocket to start. We've been lucky here at Cumberland Goodwill to have a great working relationship with our local high schools. They put on an EMT course that allows graduating juniors and seniors an opportunity to step right into this field. This has been wonderful, and we need to see this the standard across the Commonwealth. If you like having emergency medical services in your community, there for you and your family when they need it, please consider contacting your state House of Representatives member or state senator. Have them support House Bills 699, 1013, and 1827. Let's get them passed and signed by the governor ASAP. Additionally, talk with your local municipalities. Ask them what they're doing to support their local EMS organizations. Finally, share this video with anyone you think who can help out and make a difference. We need your help so we can help others. Until next time, I'm Nathan Herrig with Cumberland Goodwill EMS in Carlisle, Pennsylvania, reminding you to stay safe and have a great EMS week. Thank you.